Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI X79A GD658D. Let us begin with some of the features listed here on the box and uh, of course the X79 chipset is for the new 2011 socket which is for second generation Intel Core i7 processors also known as Sandy Bridge E. Uh, with this package, you get, of course, the OC Genie 2, the one-second overclocking button uh, that MSI integrates in a lot of their boards. You also get both SLI and Crossfire X capabilities, Windows 7 compatibility, of course, uh, the aforementioned Core i7, second generation, uh, the aforementioned X79 chipset, military class 3 components, PCI Express Generation 3, which has improved bandwidth over the PCI Express bus, and you get a click BIOS, or a UEFI, which allows use of the mouse within the BIOS. Looking here at the uh, back of the box, we can see uh, some more information, such as the, uh, uh, the MOSFETs have uh, a special temperature gauge which will give you a warning at a certain temperature and will shut down the computer if it goes too hot. Uh, we have uh, high quality components, military class 3, uh, super ferrite chokes, uh, provide higher current, solid capacitors. Uh, you also get the overclocking features here along with the OC Genie 2. You get the instant OC function and the uh, software-based overclocking of the control center. You get supercharger USB ports that will charge your USB devices faster. You get THX True Studio Pro Sound that's integrated into the motherboard, the onboard uh, audio. And then back over here to the uh, PCI Express Generation 3, just talking about the bandwidth available there. Generation 3 car, uh, PCI Express cards are expected to be out sometime next year, 2012, uh, but you do get effectively twice the bandwidth when going with uh, PCI Express Generation 3 compatible motherboard, and of course uh, you will need that second gen Core i7 processor because that has the PCI Express controller integrated into it. And now we're going to go ahead with an unboxing, of course, show you everything you get with the package. That is the motherboard. We'll set that aside and do a detailed overview in just a moment. But let's see, what do you get as far as accessories? You, of course, get a driver and installation disk. Uh, it's usually best to download the latest drivers from the MSI website, if possible. But keep that on hand just in case. You get a certificate of quality and stability because this is a military class 3 board. The components are certified, so that's a little paper indicating that that is the case. Uh, you get the X79A GD65 uh, manual right there. You also get a software application manual to show you how to use the software applications included on that disk. Uh, you get a full color layout of the board itself. Folds that there and shows you everything that's on there. Uh, you could also watch this video because I'm going to be talking about most of that stuff at the same time. And the uh, last bit of documentation here is just uh, MSI information on some of the other products that they sell. In each of these little baggies, you get serial ATA cables and uh, some power adapters. So this is a Molex 4-pin to serial ATA power adapter. And in here we have two serial ATA Revision 3 compatible cables. So you get four cables total, serial ATA cables that is. Uh, those all have L brackets on one end. Uh, looks like here is a, aha, that is another serial ATA cable, and that is actually, I believe, yes, that is an eSATA cable. So this is a, oh, I've, I've seen this before, I know what this is. Uh, actually, what it is, is a PCI bracket adapter there that gives you a couple eSATA ports, also gives you a Molex port, so you route that over to your power supply. Then you get uh, an additional cable here and an additional adapter here. So basically you can set up a couple serial ATA power and data required devices outside of your case just via a PCI Express bracket there at the back. So it gives you some external capabilities for connecting components along with the stuff that you have set up inside the case. I'll go ahead and pull this one out. This is a USB 3 adapter. It doesn't want to come out of the baggie. There we go. Uh, again, a PCI bracket there for the back of your case, a 20-pin USB 3.0 uh, uh, plug there to plug into the motherboard, and that will give you a couple more USB 3 ports on the back. You get a SLI bracket, and that is uh, for triple slot spacing because 
the board does have triple slot spacing on the PCI Express ports. Uh, you get the MSI M connectors, those are to assist in plugging in your front panel connectors. And finally, you get an input output shield. And now here's a look at the X79A GD65 motherboard itself. As you can see, we have a blue and black theme going on uh, with the gray heat sinks here at the top and the bottom. Uh, just real quick, while well, we have a wide chat here to point out all of your system fan headers, you do get uh, four uh, system fan headers plus the CPU, so five total. All of them are four pin. Uh, you have the CPU fan right up here at the top. You have a system fan over here, system fan here, system fan here, and a system fan there. So for your fronts over there and your rears over here, uh, plenty of uh, four pin PW PWM controllable system fan headers. And now uh, let's go over the board in detail. We'll start down here in the bottom right. And uh, for starters, we can see a couple USB 2.0 headers. This one here has a red background, and that is because it is uh, compatible with the supercharger function that MSI has. And uh, I was curious how that works, so I looked it up real quick. Basically, you connect a USB uh, header to that guy right there, and then devices that you plug into it can be charged uh, much faster than you normally would. It is software required, so you'll need to install the software in your operating system. And it's sur in supercharger mode, you actually lose the data capability, but it will charge your devices much faster. And then also when the system is shut, is, uh, shut down or goes to standby, it will automatically default to charging mode, so you can plug uh, your tablets or your phones in there, charge them up nice and fast. Right above that, we have a postcode right there. So uh, when you're booting up, if you have any errors, you can get a postcode right there to determine what the problem is. Another USB 2.0 port. Uh, header, a USB 3.0 20-pin header right there. Next to that we have our front panel connectors, so all across the bottom. Next to that you have a surface mounted power button, and next to that you have these plus and minus buttons. These can be used to manually increase or decrease the B clock or base clock frequency of your processor. We have a 1394 Firewire header. Uh, we have a power input there, and that is for if you're going to be running SLI or Crossfire X. Uh, you need a little bit of additional juice for your PCI Express bus, and you can plug in a Molex plug right there for that. Next up, we have an audio header for front panel audio, and uh, that's pretty much it for your front panel connectors. Above that, we have our PCI Express area, and uh, again, these are PCI Express 2.0 compatible, of course, but also PCI Express 3.0 compatible. Uh, so once those cards are available, you'll be will be able to take advantage of that increased bandwidth. Uh, we also have uh, SLI and Crossfire capability. Uh, we have this top one here and this one here that's triple spaced as well as the bottom that are totally 100% uh, wired up for 16 speed uh, PCI Express. Uh, we have a couple here in the middle that are, are wired for 8 speed PCI Express. Uh, they are physical 16 speed slots. And then we have a single speed PCI uh, adapter right there in the middle. And that pretty much wraps it up for your PCI express area. Over here to the right we have an MSI uh, heat sink and that is right above the X79 chipset. Uh, the X79 chipset covers a lot of functionality and actually handles a lot of things natively. Uh, for instance a lot of your USB 2.0 is controlled by that. You also get uh, essentially the same serial ATA connectivity that was available with your Z68 P67 chipsets and that is that you get two uh, serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports right there. You get four Serial ATA Revision 2, 3 gigabit per second ports right here. And then MSI has gone ahead and added on one more uh, ASMedia ASM1061 uh, Serial ATA Revision 3 controller. So you get two more 6 gigabit ports right there via an add-on chip. Moving right along up the side of the board, we have our 24-pin motherboard uh, main power connector. Uh, right above that, we have a J Turbo header right there. Oh, you know what I skipped over was right down here is actually a little switch. This does have a dual BIOS, uh, so you can practice on one BIOS and switch off to the other, and there's just a little actual physical switch for that right there, so you can easily switch between uh, your main BIOS and your backup. Moving along, uh, we have this entire area right here, and I actually probably need to zoom out a little bit so we can get it all in there because... It's pretty big. This is uh, both your 2011 socket area as well as your DIMM slots. And uh, one of the big features of X79, as well as Sandy Bridge E processors, is it does have an internal memory controller that is quad channel capable. So you get uh, install four DIMMs here, and each DIMM will have a dedicated uh, channel to communicate with the processor. 
And uh, MSI has gone ahead and actually doubled up the amount of DIMM slots required for quad channel, uh, hence the 8D in this uh, motherboard's uh, model name, which means you have eight DIMM slots. Uh, so you can populate four of these, two on each side for quad channel, or if you want to uh, go for broke, you can populate all of them and you can have increased memory uh, capacity. Now, as far as density goes, uh, we're just now seeing eight gigabyte DIMMs on the market. So you could populate all these with eight gig DIMMs and get uh, 64 gigs of memory. Uh, actually, my manual states that it will support up to 128 gigabytes max. But now I need to start saying a new thing, which is <laughs> that 16 gigabyte DIMMs really uh, I don't believe are out there at all right now. We're just now seeing the eight gigs. So uh, 64 if you're really shooting high, uh, 32 if you go with four gig DIMMs, which are much more affordable right now. Uh, but in any case, you can have plenty of memory capacity. Right in the center there, we have our 2011 socket. It uh, has double uh, retention brackets there for the pressure plate uh, to make sure that the processor is seated in there. It is fairly large. And uh, you will notice that because of the memory spacing here, uh, you have a slightly different configuration, particularly for your VRMs. So right up here above the motherboard socket, uh, we have our VRMs. And typically, you would see those uh, on the right side where these DIMM slots are. Uh, but your VRMs do have a heat pipe design cooler right there. It's got a heat pipe going from the uh, contact area at the bottom up to the top to make sure you get plenty of heat dissipation. And uh, generally speaking, if you're installing this motherboard, uh, if you have the top of your case right up here above it, uh, it is very wise to put your, in, put your uh, case exhaust fans at the top, actually uh, flip them so that they are intake fans so you get plenty of fresh, cool air right on your VRMs. Just to the left of that, we have an 8-pin uh, supplemental CPU power connector there. Uh, and that pretty much wraps it up for the front of the motherboard. And lastly, here are your input outputs on the uh, upper left side of the motherboard. You have a combo PS2 port for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, you get a fair amount of USB 2.0 ports, two here, two here, two here, and two here. So a total of eight there on the back of the board, as well as four more available through the headers that I showed you earlier. Uh, you also get some audio outputs here. So you get a coax audio as well as an optical Toslink audio output. You get a FireWire port right on top of there. Uh, you get a gigabit internet or LAN port right there, RJ45, and that is actually an Intel uh, Ethernet controller there, so an Intel 80, 82579 uh, LAN chip right there controlling that gigabit Ethernet. And then finally you have your audio here, uh, which is an HD audio by Realtek, ALC892, uh, and you get eight channel audio, and you have uh, sensitive jacks there that can tell when you plug and unplug your devices. Finally, a couple more USB 3.0 ports, the blue ones right there, giving you a total of four USB 3.0 ports available on the motherboard. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the MSI X79A GD65 8D motherboard featuring the X79 chipset and the 2011 socket from Intel, supporting Intel second generation core i7 processors also known as Sandy Bridge E. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos just like it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.